Hi there, welcome back to another episode of The City Considers here at Davis Media Access. My name is Autumn Lebe Renault. I'm your host, and I have with me today Davis Mayor Brett Lee and Davis City Council Member Lucas Frericks, and we're talking about the implementation of paid parking in some of the downtown areas. Welcome to you both. Uh, thanks for having thanks us. Thanks so much, yeah. So I've been following the news and I've been following the council meetings and uh, you all made a decision to begin implementing, implementing paid parking in some areas downtown so we can talk about what they are. And then uh, let's talk about what kind of feedback you're, you're getting from the community and what's going on. Let's start with you, Brett. Uh, sure. So, I, I, um, so some of the feedback we're getting is uh, negative. Uh, people are a little bit concerned. I think that's partly due to we have a few people downtown who are opposed to paid parking and they're going around and so they're sort of asking a, a question, which is essentially, if you had to pay for parking today, would that make you less likely or more likely to come downtown? Okay. And with that narrow question, the obvious answer is, well, no, I, I don't want to pay for parking. I'd rather have free parking. Right. But really the important question is, if there were a way for parking to be more convenient for you, would you be willing on occasion to pay for that parking? Mm -hmm. And so that's really the, the more appropriate question because what the city is proposing, what we're proposing, is really a package. And the package is really meant to address what currently is a very challenging situation. Right. So if you instead were to ask somebody, hey, do you ever have problems finding a parking space downtown? most people would probably say yes. And so the idea is, well, how do we address that? How do we come up with a solution? Right. And so the solution is really um, basically three parts, which is uh, some areas of paid parking, some areas of free parking, very similar to what we have today, which would be sort of a two hour time limit, mm -hmm. and then other areas of free parking with a longer time limit. Because we have a variety of complaints about the current <coughs> parking situation, Part of it is having trouble finding a place, but also some people park in the two-hour zone. They go and they do a little window shopping and then they meet a friend for lunch and suddenly they're running back to their car to find a ticket because they've been there right. for two and a half hours. Right. And so the proposal is fairly comprehensive. Yeah. So we have some, some really heavily impacted areas. Farmer's Market on a Saturday, for, for example, and the core area downtown any day from about 11.30 to 1.00. Um, so, which of those ar areas will be seeing some implementation of paid parking? So, I don't know if you want to talk about this, Lucas, or uh, I should... Actually, if you want to yeah, talk about sure. the area, and then I'll talk so, a little more about it. So, the challenge right now is pretty much most of downtown is either free two-hour or free 90-minute parking. Mm -hmm. And we ask employees, hey, could you park a little further away to free up some spaces for customers? There's not really an incentive because they move a little further away and they're still in a two hour zone right. and they're still going to have to move their car after two hours. And so the idea is how do we incentivize people to sort of move a little further? And that's related to employees, but there's also the issue of UC Davis students who are parking in our downtown, especially in the sort of southwest corner of our mm -hmm. downtown, mm -hmm. and then just going to campus for their one class and then scooting back sure. and hopping in their car and driving away because on-campus parking is about $9. Yeah. So in terms of your question about the lunchtime, if we had a place for employees where they knew that they could just park for the full day without having to move their car, mm -hmm. a few blocks further north, m many employees would take advantage of that, which would then free up the spaces around the shops. Right. Right. And there have been surveys before showing that a good number of the cars that are parked downtown are not from shoppers, they're actually from employees who are just sort of parking near the, where they work. Yeah. So that would free up some space. And then there would be some paid parking areas which would be uh, for people who sort of want even more convenience. Right, and having yeah. to move every two hours is no fun for anyone. Right. So. Yeah, I was just going to add a few things. I think, you know, we, this has been a process, so this didn't just come about, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's been a, a public and ongoing discussion for several years at this mm -hmm. point. The city had a parking task force, yes. you know, the parking advisory task force that was nearly 20 members of all over, you know, representing some downtown businesses, representing just citizens from around the community, a bunch of different groups, uh, Unitrans, you know, all kinds of folks were all part of this. And, you know, it met for well over a year, uh, and then it came up with a series of 19 recommendations, uh, which one of, one of the 19 
2017 included some adding paid some paid parking, right. additional paid parking. Uh, you have to also remember that we already have paid parking downtown. Yes. The the lot on you know the East Street Plaza lot is our is a paid parking lot and has and if you go down there and look in that lot, pretty much most times of the day it is full because people are willing to pay for some parking to be close to you know where they want to yeah. be. Yeah. Um, and so the the entire series of recommendations included a variety of things like um, additional electronic wayfinding signage, which is just about ready to be implemented right now. We're getting ready to start imp imp uh, putting in this different signs. So like when you come under the Richards Tunnel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You will see a signage that says, you know, 200 parking spots this direction, 400 parking spots this direction, right? And, and then also the parking structures as well will have actual signage in front of them, electronic signage that's monitored and up goes up and down that says how many right. spaces are available on each floor. And it's really going to be quite great. So it's a tool to help people sort of find their way. Um, I think that's, you know, there's a whole range of other um, uh, other recommendations that were included, but uh, as well as the additional paid parking, but that's mm -hmm. those are all things that sort of come together in a package. So it's not just a punitive, you know, we're at making you pay for parking. Um, it, there's really a whole sort of suite of tools to sort of help deal with the parking management issues. Right. What kind of feedback are you getting from business owners specifically? What I've read, it seems kind of mixed. So. Yeah. So initially, when they hear, oh, there's going to be paid parking, they understandably very concerned, but when you sort of tell them about the whole package, they're much more open to it. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we're very fortunate uh, to have is we have like one of the nation's best uh, parking consultants mm -hmm. who's going to help us with the implementation. So the idea is not that one day wake up and the whole downtown <laughs> is covered with parking right. meters. Right. Yeah. It's going to be done in a phased approach, and as we learn more, we'll adjust. Not mm -hmm. only uh, we'll adjust the, the amount, the, the cost to, yeah. to park, but also the location of the paid parking areas. Because what we don't want to do is have an area with paid parking, and then the adjacent areas are heavily impacted with people just sort of being a half a street sure. away, right? Sure. So if you're one of these businesses who's sort of on the edge of the, you know, the main part of downtown, yeah. Understandably, you'd be concerned. Most of the concerns are really addressed when we talk about how we're going to do this carefully. And they're also very excited about the fact that we have added some additional parking uh, just before you come under the Richards underpass, mm -hmm. and that we're also talking about adding uh, some more capacity in another uh, city parcel. So it really is sort of some capacity, changing some of the time limits to make it more convenient, and then also just a, a smaller, well, a small area with paid parking. Right. And so one of the criteria for success is, does it actually bring more people downtown? Because I, I think, well, many of the people I talk to will sometimes not go downtown because they don't want to deal with the parking headache, uh, rightly or wrongly. I hate to admit it, but right. yeah. And so if you knew for, let's say you were in a rush and you just really wanted to sort of go to one specific shop and would you be willing to pay 50 cents to, you yeah. know, park in front of a parking meter and have, you know, easy access? Yeah. Most, many people say yes. That 50 cents or a dollar is enough to dissuade the students from parking there mm -hmm. because right now it's free. So the, you know, the, the, they kind of weigh the, the pluses and minuses and they pay for a couple of hours of parking versus being really close to their classroom yeah. where they might actually yeah. instead get a quarterly parking pass. Right. Uh, it might tilt the scales a little bit more towards what I think is probably the more appropriate choice, which is uh, getting the UC Davis student uh, parking pass and parking it on right. campus. Yeah. Just one other quick point, which I think is really important, is that you know we're also uh, the key is to actually take the the resources, the dollars that we receive in paid parking fees, and to reinvest them in the downtown. That right? was going to be mean, my that, next question. The, right. What happens whole, with that money? Absolutely. Yeah. So mm -hmm. some some of the um, dollars certainly go to for the police department in terms of parking enforcement, sure. right, to help operate that. But the bulk of the dollars will go back into the downtown in terms of like downtown cleanliness, right? I mean, keep, you, know, keep, you know, making sure that the, uh, you know, sort of the, the streets are clean and such, right? I mean, making sure the sidewalks are clean, make, you know, really that that's the type of thing. And improvements, you know, additional trees in the downtown, all those types of things. So those are really, it's really important that, you know, we take those dollars and reinvest them in the downtown. Right. Yeah. One question I, I know you've been asked is, well, is this just being done to raise money for the city? But I, I think you've really addressed that there. Um, 
I've also heard criticism that it discriminates against students, low income, elderly people who might not be able to afford parking. And I would say that could be true if it were if the entire downtown were blanketed and paid parking, but clearly you're saying that there's going to be kind of a trial with some areas having parking, paid parking and others not. Yeah, so free. it's really the the trial is really the the cost to park per hour sure. and sort of the boundaries a little bit. But what's not a trial is the fact that there will still be free parking downtown and that there will be free parking downtown that is for a longer period of time. Right. Uh, as far as uh, you know, people with mobility concerns, I think it'll actually be much more convenient uh, because when we do this, there'll be some more designated uh, handicapped parking spots. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then for those that really have a priority for sort of getting somewhere quickly, it'll be a trade-off for them, whether they want to pay a dollar to you know, park adjacent to where they want to go. Yeah. Uh, but the downtown is relatively compact. Sometimes it doesn't feel like it, but it actually it's, it's the distances are fairly small. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think the council has done a great deal to tackle this issue um, over the past couple of years, as you said, Lucas. And you know, I, I see it all related. The addition of the the jump bicycles, for example, the addition of other options um, where you don't have to necessarily drive. It's all, you know, you have to try it out and you have to you have to see what works. And I know that you get a lot of feedback from the community, no matter what decision you make. Uh, one one question I do have is. Um, from time to time, there is discussion about parking garages. Sure. Will we build more parking garages to um, to build up instead of out? And so, what what's the current council thinking on this? Yeah, we're we're open minded about that. I believe that currently it's not so much a capacity issue. So we have a garage at Fourth and G, which is underutilized. Uh, Lucas talked about how we're going to have this sort of electronic signage. Right. Understandably, people are reluctant to pull into a garage and then sort of go all the way to the top and realize, oh, there's no spaces. Right. Sure. But if you know that there's you know 47 spaces, it's a much more inviting experience. We also want to um, have better lighting, just make it a more uh, comfortable mm -hmm. place for people to park. So we're looking at things like that. Ultimately, though, we will need additional parking, and sort of the best practices from what we've been told by the parking experts mm -hmm. is for there to be a more of a centralized lot, mm -hmm. rather centralized, not so much just one lot in the downtown, but to aggregate the parking in one or two areas so that each individual shop doesn't feel obligated to have their own little two or three spots. And so as we go and have some more vertical mixed use and things like that, right. we're looking at the possibility of adding capacity and that um, could take many sh uh, shapes and forms. One important thing though, uh, in the current situation, people will sometimes say, oh, I don't want to pay for parking. The city should just build a garage. Yeah. We don't have the 15 to 20 million dollars yeah. to build a garage. Exactly. And then there's one sort of wild card in the mix. And the experts have told us to be very cautious about constructing new garages with uh, the approach of autonomous vehicles and things like that. There is potentially a scenario where our car or a shared vehicle will drop us off and then potentially sort of remotely go and park somewhere a little further away, yeah. and when we're ready to be picked up, it comes and picks us up. Mm. Yeah, there's and no question that's a f still a few years off, but I mean, the, right. you know, the fear is that you, you know, we go and spend, firstly, a, huge, a very large amount of money that we don't have sure. on something that is a single use or one, one sort of primary use, a parking garage, right. and then you know, the technology over the course of the next 10 years changes such that it then is, you know, sort of becomes an obsolete yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah, situation. So. And you mentioned uh, jump bikes. One of the important yeah. things, and the, I think the council's been um, very open about this, is these are for people who want to use them. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes people feel like, oh, the council's trying to force me to ride a bike, and I don't want to ride a bike. We're not after that. We're trying to make it as convenient as possible for people to support our downtown. And there'll be the, you know, we're trying to make bicycle parking more convenient there. We're looking at some of the e-scooters and just helping people have an easy, convenient way to get yeah, exactly. downtown. Right. And, you know, later tonight it's supposed to be raining. 
understandably, a lot of people who might normally ride their bike or you know walk downtown yeah. might like to go by car, and that's fair. We're not trying to sort of micromanage, you know, There's force somebody a, yeah. to yeah. to choose a certain path. But what we do want to do is make it so that it's convenient and easy for people to get downtown, whatever your mode of transportation yeah. is. Yeah. I would say also just one quick point. I mean, add, just add on to the to the junk bike scenario, right? It's a, you know it's something that we felt was a really cool and unique technology, right? Yeah. And so have and it's and it's an interesting tool to sort of add into the toolkit. And so and the thing that's so great so far is that they've been wildly successful. Right. I mean, yeah. people you know those those red jump bikes are on average getting between five and six rides per day. Yeah, they're and, everywhere. Which is, is that until people yeah. are really using them. So yeah. that's great. We are out of time for this episode, but I'm going to have you come back in a couple of months, if you will, and sure. kind of update us as the or as the implementation unfolds. Um, keep us posted, and I'll also be curious what the uh, evaluation process will be for how it's working. So we'll have you back again. Okay. Thanks, Thanks so, so much, much for coming well, on. You. This yeah. has been the City Considers here at Davis Media Access. Thanks to our guest today, Mayor Brett Lee and City Council Member Lucas Frerichs.